Hi everyone, welcome to the US CPA classes for business analysis and reporting examination. So in this particular class, we will be discussing in the state and local governmental accounting. The specific topic I'll be covering in this video is about budgetary comparison analysis. Yes, this topic would be from the content of format and content of financial section of annual comprehensive financial reporting section of your state and local governmental accounting. So this is being quite important topic. So let's understand more in detail about budgetary comparison analysis. Hi everyone, welcome back to BAR class. So before we went on a break, we have finished our notes to financial statement topic and then we have completed our management discussion and analysis topic. Right. So now we are starting the next topic, which is budgetary comparison reporting. So this is also kind of mandatory disclosure, or you can say is a required supplementary information for the government-wide financial statement and fund financial statement of the government. So there, like these are the information you need to provide in the budgetary reporting. So these are like 10 pointers, which you need to keep in mind when you are making or preparing the budgetary comparison reporting. So uh, maybe if I so if you see here, yes, so if you see, this is budgetary comparison statement. So in this, they will show you like budgetary fund balances at the beginning, original budget, final budget and actual amount. So if you see, they're putting all the three things over here. Right, so you have original budget, which you have budgeted at the beginning of the year or start of the year. Then you know, during the year, you might have seen certain changes. Based on that, you have improvised the budget that may be considered as your final budget. And then you're comparing that with the actual budget. So if you see the variance over here is between final budget and the actual, right? Not the opening budget. So not the original budget. So when you are making the variance analysis, it has to be with the final budget versus actual, right? But when they have made the changes from original budget to uh, final budget or revised budget, they have to take internal approvals. They have to go through the internal approval process for that, right? If you see here, the budgetary and fund balances at the beginning is this much. Then the resources, resources mean inflow of the money from where all they are expecting they will be receiving the money, which include like taxes, licenses, Points, interest, intergovernment revenue, charge of service, other services, other financial resources, and interfund transfer. So these are like total money they are expecting to be received, but they have actually received three point nine million dollars, right? And then if you see the apportionment, that means like outflow of the cash from the budget versus actual. So original budget was for this government, uh, general government expenditure is this and revised budget is this and the actual expenditure is this and comparison of actual budget with the revised, uh, you can say, uh, sorry, a revised budget with the actual expenditure is this, right? That kind of analysis we need to give. And here, if you see like general government, their salaries, supplies, then, you know, like they have different district, district one, two, three, four, five each district wise the detail they have given and then after the uh, general government funds again like office of the country risk management controller treasurer department of taxes accessories purchasing budgeting and analysis office of the country councils right and then personal expenditure registrar information services 
communication department of planning and development so each department wise how much they have allocated the fund and how much the fund is being actually utilized is being mentioned over here if you see right so this way you need to give the disclosure of budgetary information so now coming back to the theory part what all things you have to be keep in mind when you are making budgetary comparison reporting so why do we need to make budgetary comparison reporting for the governmental accounting hmm? you remember in first class of the governmental accounting we discuss about this why do we need to make budgetary comparison sir because i can believe uh, there, there is a proper uh, budget being approved uh, for mm -hmm. different projects government projects mm -hmm. so it is important to uh, monitor against those budgets mm -hmm. so that's yeah. why reporting a proper reporting is required around the same yeah yeah very true very true anyone else would like to add gurmeher hmm? ayush akash kashish so because each and every component of the you know budget has to be compared before and after mm -hmm. and uh, you do you remember like in very first class we discuss about like uh, uh, about the budgetary process of the government so same way like how you see budget in the month of february which government of india present right so do you remember the example we have discussed how it has been actually formed so the overall government budget which right and then that overall government budget they have given to the respective ministries and department and that respective ministry and department they have different initiatives and project so that budget has been further allocated to those initiatives and the funds right and then from that funds it will go to the implementation partner for the utilization of that fund how the government at a government wide level you will ensure the appropriate and timely utilization of the resources and budget for that this budgetary comparison is very important tool the same way like any organization internally if you see for any any normal profit making organization they also do like monthly mis reporting budget versus actual reporting right so here as the government is of the public and for the public so they report this budget versus actual comparison or the monitoring standards which they have adopted for the budget versus actual to the public place right so what all things you need to keep in mind when you are preparing the budget and then after the budget comparing with the actual utilization and then in middle of the period probably you might be reassessing all the assumptions you have taken and revising the budget so what is all process they have what all disclosure is being required for the financial statement government wide financial statement so that is called budgetary comparison reporting hmm? the first one is statement content the budgetary comparison statement present revenue expenditure and change in fund balance if you see all this information which we are seeing over here are divided into two major thing first one is the revenue part which we have discussed sources of inflow right and the second one is charges to appropriation which is outflow right and all these things are movement so the important thing variance here means is the movement so budgetary comparison statement present revenue expenditure and change in fund balance make sense right yes, it includes the name of the governmental unit fund name statement name and the reporting period or the date of reporting period right what information you need to provide the name of the fund name of the unit name or statement name and the reporting period and the date of reporting hmm? data column what all columns of the data you need to provide columns typically include your original budget revised budget and the actual and the variance of under and over budget which is actual versus revised budget right this is what we have seen your original budget your revised budget your actual amount and the variance between 
रिवाइज बजट एंड एक्चुअल अमाउंट मेक सेंस द वेरियंस कॉलम इज ऑप्टिमल बट कॉमनली यूज फॉर हाईलाइटिंग द वेरियंस मेक सेंस वट ऑल इंफॉर्मेशन वी प्रोवाइड थर्ड वन इज रेवेन्यू एंड एक्सपेंडिचर डेटा सो डिटेल्ड एंड टोटल रेवेन्यू एंड एक्सपेंडिचर डेटा आर प्रेजेंटेड डिराइव फ्रॉम बजेटरी एंट्रीज एंड क्लोजिंग एंट्री सो वेन यू मेक द बजट यू मेक द बजट एट अ स्मॉल सी जी यू लेवल सो इट्स स्मॉल एंटिटी लेवल स्मॉल कॉम्पोनेंट लेवल स्मॉल फंड लेवल राइट सो अकॉर्डिंगली यू नीड टू डिस्क्राइब और यू नीड टू प्रोवाइड द डिटेल of the expenditure made at the each unit level uh, right or at each fund level as the case may be right fourth one is budget revision so when you do the budget revision and why you do the budget revision any idea why one has to revise the budget and what are the benefit of revising the budget the real time progress ke basis pe there might be requirement to mm -hmm. for allocation of more funds or to reduce the funds which were already allocated or like the budget was passed mm -hmm. so basis the current progress there might be changes and basis the monitoring that could be revised yes absolutely right so you make an initial budget for the year based on best of your estimate but how things are moving like what are the subsequent activities or subsequent event take place or the market condition or economic condition changes accordingly you need to revise the budget right so that is called revision of budget so when you do the revision of budget what all things you need to keep in mind is that change is being significant or material to the user of financial statement whenever you are making any uh disclosure or whenever you are making any changes in the financial statement or with the budgets versus actual or the revision in budget one common thing you always be keep in mind is the user of financial statement is the amount or is the disclosure is being significant to the user of financial statement if answer is yes then you need to do the needful if answer is no then you can ignore it right if the budget revision occurred during the year then the original budget remain unchanged you will be providing the original budget while the revised budget reflect as amendment so if you see the original budget is there and the revised budget is in separate column right the variance compare actual amount with the revised budget so variance is always between actual amount and revised budget next one is correction of prior period error what is prior period error so last year correction what do you mean by prior period error first i just wanted to understand you know, what do you think is a prior period error so like if uh, a method of depreciation was not used properly Mm -hmm. uh the, the, that could have because financial uh, errors have re retrospective effect or uh, change of policies as well whereas estimates have uh, prospective uh, effect mm -hmm. they won't mm -hmm. change the prior year results mm -hmm. so if there's any change in the accounting policy mm -hmm. or there there was any error basis your uh, depreciation method for example or Mm. there was wrong adjustments were made so mm -hmm. we'll make those adjustment in the current year uh, mm -hmm. for those prior year adjustment basis on their uh, opening retain earnings mm -hmm. we'll make adjustment in the opening retain earnings mm -hmm. yeah kashish ayush agars you would like to add anything the prior period uh, errors are basically omissions in misstatements mm -hmm. yes in the entity's financial statements mm. uh, what is omission and mis uh, error so omission is like we had to you know disclose certain financial information uh, which occurred during a particular period in the prior period but which we were not able to record in our financial statements that can be a omission that can be inadvertent inadvertently missed out uh, from uh, reporting and misstatement is if like we had to state 
an x amount we stated in x x amount so mm -hmm. that a misstatement which uh, you know obviously had to be accounted for in that period but uh, you know we could not account for in that period and that was missed and now we need to correct it in the current financial statements that can be a prior period uh, misstatement which mm -hmm. means taken account of in the current financial statements yeah yeah very good both of you are like uh, uh, shared very appropriately so prior period adjustment may include on account of prior period error. Error are those uh, mistakes which is not done intentionally. So if it has been done intentionally, it would have been considered as a fraud. So like Ayush was saying, in a previous year, we missed to represent any item or maybe instead of, uh, let's say $1,000, we have mentioned $100 or $10,000. So by mistake, then there may be a typo error kind of things. So, right, those things are being considered as error. And now you got to know about those error and you want to make the correction in that error, right? So in that, like how, uh, you know, like Kunmihar was explaining two things you need to keep in mind. If there is any error, which is on account of, uh, you know, like accounting policy matter, then it may have retrospective impact. Or if any error may be on account of, change in judgment or change in estimate, it may have a prospective impact, which you will be considering the current financial statement. But if there is any mistakes or if there is any typo error, right, and that has resulted into any material misstatement, then you can do the impact in the previous year financial statement. We can adjust in the opening retained earning as well, right? So correction of prior period error. First one is correcting the prior year error. In, is reported as a restatement of the beginning fund balance. That means you can make the correction in the previous financial statement, fund financial statement, and update the opening fund balance. Second is change in the beginning fund balance due to accounting principle change are reported similarly, like how we were discussing earlier, retrospective impact, right? Next one is budgetary basis of accounting. Both budget and actual amount are represented using budgetary basis, even if different from GAAP. When you are making a budgetary representation or when you are doing, making a disclosure of budgetary comparison, then you are not required to follow GAAP. You are required to follow the information which is being more, uh, which is being generally used by internally management so that outside world can also understand from which lenses the management see the budget versus actual comparison. It is not mandatorily required to be gap. If it is being in line with the gap, then it is good and easy to understand, but it is not mandatory to follow gap for the budgetary reporting purpose. Right? Both budget and actual amounts are presented using budgetary basis even if it is different from GAAP. And some government use non-GAAP budgetary basis, such as cash basis or income rents basis. Right? Seventh one is GAAP reporting. The budgetary comparison required by GAAP may be presented either in the GAAP operating statement format or in a budget format. So it's not mandatory to follow only the GAAP. So it's recommendatory or it's an optional, I would say. Right now, coming to the presentation side, the budgetary comparison statement can be part of the basic financial statement or required supplementary information. But to the best of my information, to the best of my experience, I have seen it is always considered as required supplementary information. It is generally not considered into the core financial statement. And for the CP examination question, it may treat as required supplementary information, right? Ninth one is budgetary basis. What is the basis of budgetary financial statement? Assume that the budget was prepared on a gap basis. If the budget is on non-gap basis, actual data must be presented likewise and reconciliation with the gap basis is necessary. So whenever you are making the budgets, Right, you'll be considering the gap as a basis. If there is any item which is not in line with the gap, then you need to make the reconciliation of the same if it would have been considered on a gap basis. 
if the uh, if on a gap basis the statement matches the actual data in a budgetary comparison statement then you are not required to make any reconciliation or adjustment the last one is non gap budgetary basis some government use non gap budgetary basis such as cash basis or encumbrance basis but they have to make a reconciliation with gap that is also required in such case actual data should be presented on a non gap budgetary basis and a reconciliation with gap is required right any doubt so far on the budgetary reporting Yes. No. no. Hmm. Okay. Let's do a question. Oops. So, what is the minimum budgetary information required to report by city budgetary comparison schedule? So, what is the minimum budgetary information required to be reported? Hmm? First one is a schedule showing proposed budget, approved budget, final amended budget, actual inflow and outflow on a budgetary basis and a variance between budget and actual. Second is a schedule of unfavorable variance as a functional level, schedule showing the final appropriation budget and actual expenditure on the budget basis, a schedule showing original budget final appropriated budget, actual inflow, outflow, and the balance of the budgetary basis. Which one is the correct? H. Y A. Hmm? Sir, first and fourth may continue. क्योंकि इसमें ओरिजिनल भी बात हो रही है देन वी हैव द फाइनल बजट एज वेल इनक्लूज एंड आउटफ्लो सो फर्स्ट ऑल ऑप्शन में ही सब कुछ इंक्लूडेड दिख रहा है हम्म हम्म वेरिएंस भी जरूरी होता है हम्म जस्ट रीड ऑल द ऑप्शन अगेन केयरफुली सो इफ द ओरिजिनल बजट द फाइनल बजट एक्चुअल इनफ्लो आउटफ्लो बैलेंसेस ऑन द बजट इज इज ओके तो फिर तो फोर्थ होगा क्योंकि प्रपोज्ड बजट तो नहीं था फोर्थ ओरिजिनल बजट और फाइनल अप्रोप्रिएशन प्रपोज और अप्रूव तो नहीं है सर वो ओरिजिनल और वही आता है उसमें फाइनल फोर्थ होगा फोर्थ फोर्थ सर सर फोर्थ ही होगा राइट सो व्हाय फोर्थ बिकॉज़ प्रपोज्ड बजट एंड अप्रूव बजट्स आर नॉट रिक्वायर्ड राइट सो यू नीड टू सेलेक्ट नॉट ओनली द राइट आंसर बट द बेस्ट राइट आंसर Right? Make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So now we are jumping on to the next topic, which is required supplementary information other than management discussion and analysis. So we are at 4.1.8, required supplementary information. So required supplementary information include a lot of things, management discussion analysis, budgetary information they all comes under the required supplementary information right so required supplementary information within the government annual comprehensive financial reporting the financial section must include in addition to the basic financial statement first is the required supplementary information and other than management discussion analysis required supplementary information over and above management discussion and analysis which we have studied earlier hmm? it represent immediately the following notes the financial statement uh, required supplementary information is an essential part of the financial reporting and should be presented with but not in basic financial statement this is over and above the basic financial statement what all things it include first one is budgetary comparison schedule right so first one is management discussion analysis second is budgetary comparison schedule which we have studied above third one is information about modified approach for reporting infrastructure asset so what is modified approach for reporting infrastructure assets the assessed condition for 
three most recent condition assessment with the assessment date. The estimated annual amount at the beginning of the fiscal year to maintain and preserve the target condition level established versus the amount actually present expense for each or part of the five reporting period. So what additional information we need to provide over and above this budget one, if you see, let's come down after this budget. We'll see infrastructure budgetary comparison should be still there. Discrete component unit. Okay, so here I they have not provided, so they directly reach to the discrete component. Okay, so what they're saying additional information is being required if there is any infrastructure asset, probably in this. Uh, you can the sample financial statement which we have, they may not have infrastructural asset. If there is an infrastructural asset, that also you need to give additional disclosure, right? And the, that is for five year. Hmm? The schedule of change in the liability and the employer contribution for pension plan and other post employment benefit plan, that also you need to disclose. If there is any pension plan, that also you need to disclose in details. Right. So two more information. First one is the information about the infrastructure asset for five year. And the second one is for the long term employee benefit contribution plan or the defined benefit plan. So that also you need to disclose. Right. So required supplementary information include four things. The first one is MDNA. Second one is budgetary comparison. Third one is infrastructure asset. And fourth one is employee benefit plans or the pension plan, post retirement plan, right? Make sense? Okay, let's do one quick question. Which of the following is considered part of the required supplementary information for general purpose external financial reporting of local government? Management discussion, notes to financial statement, fund financial statement, combined non-major fund statement. Which one is considered as required supplementary information? The management discussion. Right, everyone agree to it? Abhinish, yes, sir. Durmehar, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Surya, right? So, management discussion. Eh? 